Now, winter is done for another year, thank goodness. It seems to have dragged on a little bit this time, hasn't it? And for many of us, it's now time to start waking up the caravan. Campsites up and down the country are opening up for us once again, and they're ready for us to visit and to start making some incredible memories. For many people, us included, the caravan really hasn't moved much throughout the winter period, whilst others have continued to tour right throughout the off-season. In either case, it's now a good time to perform some maintenance and some checks around the caravan, and that's exactly what I'm doing up here today. So why don't you join me as I run around like Challenge Annika and perform some of those checks around the caravan. Now in this video I make reference to other videos that I have made over the past few years and I've put a link to all of those videos and some of the things that I use in this video in the description down below. You'll also may see a little icon in the top corner as well. So with all that being said let's crack on and the first task we need to do whilst we're here today is to sterilise the fresh water system. In spring I sterilise the caravan water systems and I do this roughly about once a year. This includes the aqua roll, the freshwater pipes, the water tanks, the taps and of course the shower. It's an easy task to perform but it can take some time for the chemicals to do their thing. I start with the freshwater sterilisation whilst I complete other jobs around the caravan or even leave this overnight and pop back in the morning. One important thing to mention is that you shouldn't use Milton Instead, use PuraClean, either in a powder form or in the sterilisation tablets. I go into more details about the products to use, the correct dosage and the method in which the sterilisation should take place in a video I created some time ago. Link to that is in the description below. Now one thing I didn't mention in that video is how I sterilise the freshwater pipe for when we're on service pitches. It's actually far simpler than you could imagine. I take the hose home, coil it up in the bath and I measure out the jug with warm water and some PuraClean and then I pour that into the hose with one end blocked off. I leave it for a few hours, coil it up in the bath and then when it's time to empty it out I simply empty the water out of the hose and run through some fresh water and then once done I swing it around like an idiot to try and get rid of as much water out of the pipe as I possibly can before coiling it up and bringing it back to the caravan. Another way to do it is to put the hose straight into the bath, fill it up with water and add your sterilising solution into that. The problem I had when I did that is I didn't know how much sterilising solution I actually needed to make up. So that's why I've opted to pouring it into the hose from here onwards. I also take this opportunity to clean the water tanks, the pipes and the fittings. Using a cleaning solution such as Thetford Tank Cleaner or Wastemaster Super Clean, the pipes and the Wastemaster can be disinfectant and cleaned at the same time. I clean the pipes and the waste fittings with a small soft brush and some tank cleaner solution in some warm water. When finished I store the Wastemaster with the cap undone to allow the vessel to dry out thoroughly. Whilst not in use, the toilet cassette can also be given a good clean too. If you open the cassette and look inside you might find what seems to be lime scale on the bottom of the tank. This is in fact chemical residue and it's really easy to remove. Use very hot water in the cassette and leave it for around 15 minutes. This will break up and dissolve the residue. Slosh the liquid around before emptying the toilet and once empty repeat the steps if the residue still exists. It can take a couple of goes if the residue is quite bad but once clean use a toilet cleaner such as Thetford cassette cleaner to disinfect the cassette and then finish off by spraying the seal with some silicon lubricant. It's important to check the tyres every time we set off, especially the torques and the tyre pressures. But now is a good time to give the tyres a really good examination, especially if the caravan has been set for a few months. Now I have a separate video that goes into really good detail on the tyres, so click on that video in the description down below. At the hitch I check that the handbrake operates normally but I also need to make sure that the brakes are not stuck on and I'm going to come back to that in a minute. I make sure that the breakaway cable is in good condition and that the electric plugs are also free from any corrosion. If you see any signs of moisture spray some WD-40 over the pins to provide some protection. Give the friction pads a good clean by using some brake disc cleaner or strong degreaser. Also give the inside of the hitch a good dousing with the same brake disc cleaner and then wipe it out. Before we move on let's check the corner steadies wind up and wind down with no resistance. If they feel a bit tight add some grease to the turn screw and then use the corner steadies backwards and forwards to work the grease into the mechanism. On the corner steadies I use lithium white grease to keep them in good condition. 
Now I mentioned brakes earlier and this is a great time to check that the motor mover is ok at the same time. With the steadies raised, the locks removed, engage the motor mover and release the handbrake. Move the caravan back and forwards a few times and this will confirm that the brakes are running free and also the motor mover is working as it should. Check the plug and the socket are in good order on the electric hookup cable. Make sure there is no corrosion on any of the pins and that the entire length of the cable is free from any damage. If it is damaged, no matter how small the damage, it's not worth repairing. Instead, replace the entire cable. If you can check the electrical items work OK, then plug the caravan into the electric hookup and run up items such as the microwave, the fridge, the hot plate, uh, in fact anything that uses mains electricity whilst you're on site. Now if you're in storage you may not be able to do that and in that case you're going to have to wait till you're away first time. I'm really lucky that I've got a portable power station so I can run up a few of these items one at a time to make sure that everything is working. But sadly if you haven't you're just going to have to wait till you're away on the very first time to make sure that it all works well. It's a good idea to change the batteries in smoke alarms, carbon monoxide detectors and tyre pressure monitoring sensors. In fact, make sure you have some spare batteries for TV remotes as well. Make sure you have some spare fuses just in case and next up we'll check the leisure battery. First up we'll check the voltage by using the inbuilt panel in the caravan. With nothing switched on the voltage should read above 12.4 volts. Anything below this voltage could indicate a discharged battery and if left in this state for prolonged periods of time can damage the battery. 12.7 volts or greater will indicate a fully charged battery. We should also check the physical condition of the battery. Make sure that the terminals are clean, free of damage or corrosion and then check the case for splits, cracks or damage. This can sometimes happen in cold weather so do pay attention to the case of the battery. If you find any cracks, bulges or liquid around the battery, the battery should be disposed of responsibly, usually at a household recycling centre. Check inside the battery locker for any damage, make sure that the straps or the brackets that hold the battery are in good order and finally an item that usually gets missed is the vent tube. If you have one fitted make sure it's connected correctly, it's free of kinks and then it vents to the outside. Now whilst the rain's just coming down it's a good time to go through some administration. I've brought all my documentation up here with me today. I don't usually keep it here in the caravan but I keep all of this safe at home. I want to make sure that nothing here has uh, lapsed, nothing here has run out and I want to make sure that all my renewal dates are well known. So I've got things here like my insurance, my tracker, uh, the renewal date for the membership here at the storage site, memberships here for national clubs. All of those things which make us enjoy this caravan more and more, I want to make sure that none of those are going to run out. So I've brought them all up here with me today and I'm going to go through this documentation plus all some other documents that I have here in the caravan as well, things like how to use the cooker and things like that. Some of that information may not be relevant for the caravan anymore but I want to go through and have a really good sort out of all the paperwork. Now, as you can probably hear it's raining quite hard at the moment as you can probably see on the window as well so i'm not going to do it just yet but in a moment i'm going to go outside and i'm going to make sure that the alarm and the tracker are working fine it's a good idea to try this out once or twice a year i want to make sure that the alarm is working as i expect it so i can hear the siren wailing away and also that it wakes up the tracker and it notifies the tracking company that the alarm has been activated i want to make sure that all of that facility which i pay for every year that all of that is working as it should. Right, you join me at the rear of the caravan looking at all the lights. Everything is fine apart from this one. I do have a bit of a problem. This one is full of condensation. I'm not sure how the water is getting in. Oh, hang on. I know how the water is getting in and so I need to fix this. I've got water coming in the seal at the top here of this light. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this off, clean it up on the inside, remove as much moisture as I can and reseal it across the top there and make sure that that doesn't happen again. I've made a good video about checking your lights, how to make sure that everything is working, making sure that all the lights up and down the caravan are fine, including that of the tow car. So why don't you go and have a look at that? I'll put a link to that in the top corner and down in the video description. Bugger.
When it comes to gas, we're not actually going to be doing much. We're just going to make sure that everything is in order. Uh, firstly, and of course, most importantly, make sure you do have enough gas. You'll be amazed how many people go away with not enough gas to last the first holiday. Uh, we are guilty of that as well. Now, I made a video on how to check for levels of gas a few years ago, so I've put a link to that in the description down below. Other than that, well, really all we're doing is performing some vital checks. We don't want to undertake any maintenance on the gas system. We don't want to take anything out. We don't want to be swapping things around. It's not our place to do that. If anything is not working correctly, stop immediately, call in a professional and let them deal with it. Bad gas installations, broken appliances or leaks can kill. So just don't take the risk. Check the date on the pigtail. If it's greater than five years old, then you really should replace it. Switch on your gas supply and light the rings on the cooker, the grill and the oven. Make sure all the flames are a clean blue flame and not yellow. If you do see any yellow flames, then switch off immediately and book your caravan in to have the gas system investigated. Whilst we are dealing with the cooker, let's check that the date on the fire extinguisher and the fire blanket are in date. And if they exceed five years of age, consider changing them for newer versions. And as we checked earlier that the batteries in the smoke alarm and the carbon monoxide detector, let's press test these buttons to make sure that they work correctly. So it's still raining and uh, I don't want to be going out in it just yet, but one of the last things we need to do is give the caravan a ruddy good clean, including cleaning the roof. Paying close attention to things like the solar panel if you have one installed and removing as much debris from the roof as you possibly can. It also gives you a great opportunity to clean things like the skylights from the outside. Now I've included in the description a couple of videos on how to clean your caravan. First of all, on how to do the roof. Now we did that a number of years ago with our old caravan in a storage yard which didn't have any on-site water and we managed to clean the roof up really, really well. It did take us some time, but it is doable. The second video is with this caravan at this storage yard which does have on-site water and I was able to give the caravan a really good deep clean. I've also put a link to another video on how to clean some of these roof lights because some of them do get quite mucky. So I've put that in the description as well on how to disassemble them, remove them and clean them up before putting them back into the caravan. Once clean, it's a good idea to apply some polish and wax. Now I'm using dry sparkle waterless wash and wax here after I've given the caravan a good clean. This removes any watermarks and streaks left over from the roof cleaning. Once done, I lubricate the lockers and the window rubbers with silicon lubricant. So now that's complete, let's pop inside and continue our deep clean. So we're going to start with a good clean, making sure that all the cupboards are empty, make sure that they've had a good wipe down inside and any food items that are left in the caravan are checked for dates and if needed, removed. Don't forget to remove any bedding, blankets, towels and scatter cushions as well. These should be taken home and washed, dried and returned back to the caravan. I like to vacuum under the seats and the bed to remove any sand, dog hair or dust and a fine tip nozzle is perfect for these hard to reach areas. In the kitchen, clean the cooker, including the hob, the grill and the oven, not forgetting the microwave, and the fridge and the sink. In fact, whilst we're talking about the fridge, let me just mention, I do take some of the innards out of the fridge and I take them home and I put them in the dishwasher to run them through. And that gives us a nice clean access to wipe down the insides and make sure that there's no mould growing in the fridge at all. In the washroom, clean all around the toilet, make sure the wash basin, the shower cubicle and the shower screen are all washed down. Now I wipe the surfaces down with a microfiber cloth and I clean all the mirrors with an automotive glass cleaner. Finally, give the floors a good vacuum, the carpets a good clean and all the work surfaces a thorough wipe over. It's also a great time to restock consumables such as toiletries, first aid items, medication and items such as sunscreen, insect repellent and not forgetting toilet chemicals. And so that's it. It's quite a list of things to do, I know, but it's thorough and it will make sure that your caravan is ready for the first trip away. Of course, this is no substitute for a caravan service and I highly recommend that you do get the caravan booked in if your caravan has been left for standing for some time. Our service is due in October, so we're a little way off yet, but I'm happy that everything here is working and the caravan is now ready for a season of making some epic memories. And if you are in the mood, why not hit the subscribe button and notification down below. And if you can do all of that, then we'll see you in the next upload. Many thanks for watching, everybody. Take care.
拜。